Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed thermal expansion in solids and we saw how solids expand when heated and they contract when cold. But do all solids expand and they contract at the same rate? That's what we are going to discuss in this lesson. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define linear expansivity and state its SI unit. Then, define bimetallic strips and explain how bimetallic strips work. And then finally, explain the applications of bimetallic strips, especially in the working of iron box and other devices. So what is linear expansivity? Linear expansivity is the tendency of a material, in this case solids, to expand when heated. So we're going to realize that when solids are heated, they experience what we call linear expansivity. Linear expansivity means expanding in a straight line. If you have a solid like this, and then you heat this solid, it will expand toward this side, and even toward this side. So in this case, it has expanded in a line. But we are going to see later, liquids and gases don't expand towards a common direction or in a line, they expand randomly. They can expand upward, downward, sideways, or through. But for solids, they expand linearly. So what we are going to realize is that different solids have different linear expansivities. So they expand and they contract at different rates. For example, if you have solids like magnesium, aluminium, copper, all of them will expand, but they will not expand by the same extent. So the SI unit of linear expansivity is per Kelvin. Per Kelvin means per a temperature or per thermodynamic temperature. So you are going to consider how much does it expand per one rise of a one temperature of one Kelvin. So we have different materials and some of their linear expansivities in per Kelvin. And as you can see, expansion in solids is very decimal in a way that it's even to a raised to power of negative six. So this means the expansion is very small in such a way that you cannot notice it using your naked eyes. So as you can see, aluminium is has an expansivity of 26 exponential negative six. Then we have brass, which is 19 exponential negative six. We have copper, 16.8 exponential negative six. Iron, 12 exponential negative six. Concrete, we have 11 exponential negative six and steel, 11 exponential negative six. This exponential negative is like, like for example, of uh, aluminum, it means it is 26 times 10 raised to power negative 6, which means 26 divided by three, ten, six zeros divided by 1 million. So these are very small numbers, 0 0.0000026. So in this case, expansivity in metals is very decimal, but different materials will have their different expansivities. And now these expansivities are very important, especially in construction, especially when you are using steel, metal, and concrete. You have to use materials which have almost the same linear expansivity so that we don't collapse or the house the houses cannot collapse when either of the two are expanding. That's why we use uh, steel and concrete because they have the same linear expansivity so that they can expand uniformly and contract uniformly when the temperature decreases. So we have an instrument called a bimetallic strip and a bimetallic strip is made by riveting. Riveting means joining two metals in a way that they cannot detach from each other. So it's made by riveting together two metals of different linear expansivity. So for you to have a bimetallic strip, you must have 
two methods which have totally different linear expansivities reverted together. And this epimetallic stripe uses the idea that a metal which is or which expands more when heated also contracts more when cooled. So at room temperature, this epimetallic stripe, the two metals are in a straight line. When you are at room temperature, they are, they are all in a straight line. However, in our case here, it's important to note that brass will expand more than iron. Brass, when heated, expands more than iron. So it means brass has higher linear expansivity than iron. Now, what happens when the bimetallic strip is heated? When the bimetallic strip is heated, remember, brass has a higher linear expansivity than iron. The metal which expands more, in this case, a brass, will expand more than iron. So at room temperature, we have them here. This at room temperature, we have brass and we have iron. But now when you heat, brass will expand more than iron. So it means it will cover more distance than iron. And since these two metals are riveted, they will bend. They will cause this one to bend because this one will be larger than this one. So they will bend in such a way that the one which expands more is on the outer part, it will cover a large distance, and then the one which expands less will be on the inner side. So that is brass, which will cover the larger distance, and then the one which expands less will be on the inner side. As you can see, this one will cover only a small distance. Brass will cover a very large distance outer, because it is on the outer cycle. And then this one will cover a very small distance. So this is iron, this is brass. So whenever you hit a bimetallic stripe, the metal which expands more will be on the outer part of the bimetallic stripe, which will bend. And then the one which expands uh, less will be on the inner part. This is when you are heating. Be very keen here. This is when you are heating. The one which expands more, this one expands more expands more, it will be on the outer part. Then the one which expands less will be the inner part of the cuff. Now, when you cool this, uh, the metallic strip, remember what we said, a metal which expands more will also contract more. So if you have them at room temperature, they are like this. You have brass on the upper part, this is brass, then this is iron this is at, at room temperature now when you cool them brass will contract more since it expands more so if it contracts more it means it will only cover a short distance and then iron will be larger now than brass because brass has contracted more so in the process now the one which will be larger will be on the inner part so it, it will make this one to bend upwards brass will be the inner side and then iron will be on the outer part because it will cover a larger distance than a uh, brass. So a metal which will be shorter will be on the inner side of the circle or of this cuff. This is brass. When cooled, it becomes shorter. This is iron. When cooled, it reduces size slowly. So this is iron. So this is when you cool, when you cool below room temperature. Be very keen. In heating, we said, brass will expand more and therefore it will cover a larger distance it will be on the outer part of the cuff then iron which it expands slowly will cover a short distance and it will be on the inner side of the cuff now when we cool brass which expands more will also contract more and it will be on the inner part of the cuff and iron which expands are less will also contract less and it will be on the outer part of the cuff so one of the applications of metallic stripes is in the construction of what we call thermostat. And a thermostat is a device used for maintaining a steady temperature. If you want the temperature to remain 50, you can use a, a metallic strip to, to maintain that temperature. And these uh, metallic strip thermostats are used commonly in iron boxes. 
and even uh, electric heaters. Now, in this case, you have, if you like, in, on the screen, you have uh, a thermostat, which is also found inside an iron box. And this thermostat have uh, iron and brass, uh, the metallic strip. Then we have a contact. You have this metal here, which we call a contact. Then this contact is connected to the terminal of the electricity. This is where we get our electricity through these terminals. So the contact is connected to the uh, terminal of the electricity, but this contact is made in a way that it is not fixed on the terminal of the electricity. So the contact is not fixed, it can touch there or it can, or it can detach itself. Then we have a control knob, this is where you adjust your knob when you are ironing your cloth. Then we have an insulator which prevents you from getting a shock from the iron box. Now what happens? So this metallic strap only regrets this contact here. It regrets the contact here, so that when the temperature is very high, this metallic strap will bend upward, like in this case, if the temperature is very high, the member brass expands more than iron, so it will bend like this. It will bend like this. It will change direction like that. And when it bends upward, it will move together with this contact, so that contact now will be at this position here, like that. So in this case, it will create a gap between this contact and this uh, terminal connecting to electricity. And in that case, the, bar, the, the iron box will stop heating and the temperature will be cooled. Now, when the temperature of the iron box is below the one which is required, then this permetallic strap now will lose the heat. And when it will lose the heat, it will try to come back to room temperature. And at room temperature, we say the permetallic strap is in a straight line. So when it comes back in a straight, to a straight line, it comes together with the contact, and this contact is made there. And then again, the iron box will be heated, and the process will continue like that, like that, until you complete your ironing. But now, if you want the temperatures to be very high, then you can also adjust this temperature knob. You can decide what type of cross you are using or you are ironing. You can adjust the knob in such a way that it can give you the required range. So whenever you are adjusting the knob, you are either increasing or decreasing the distance between the contact and the terminal of electricity. So this thermostat is also used to control temperatures of electric cooks or electric cookers and electric heaters and even warming rooms and fridges. So that has marked the end of our lesson today. We have discussed linear expansivity and bimetallic strips and even the applications of bimetallic strips. In the next lesson, we will discuss the application of expansion and contraction in solids.